Hello and good morning. This is your friend Pastor Roy speaking to you from beautiful Chesapeake, Virginia and continuing our series on personal evangelism. The idea is if somebody asks or somebody is interested, how do I become a Christian? What would you say? What would you uh, say, indicate, teach that would lead them to an understanding as clear and simple as possible of how they can become a Christian, have assurance of eternal life, that they are going to heaven. According to not how they feel or how, how good they are, and that does not apply here. It's in whom they believe. And so we have gone through uh, four sessions with uh, four different uh, scriptural passages. And today we're going to go to another, to equip us, to equip you and me, that when the opportunity arises, when the Spirit of God opens a heart, opens a door, uh, how we can respond to someone who says, uh, what must I do to be saved? So today we look in the, uh, the book of Acts, the 16th chapter, and by of his way of history, uh, Paul and Silas were um, in this community and they were uh, beaten uh, severely and put into prison uh, because of the preaching of the gospel, the teaching of the gospels. And uh, the, um, the, uh, Paul and Silas were, were uh, uh, well, let me read the scripture here. It says in verse 25, And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Obviously, they did it with strong voice. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. Now, my understanding is that if the uh, j jailer, the keeper of the prison, um, lost, uh, allowed his prisoners to escape, he would pay for that with his life. And uh, so the, the jailer, the keeper of the prison, waking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners uh, had been fled. So obviously falling on his sword was uh, a more... Um, should say rapid death than what they would have done to him uh, if he had lost the prisoners. And, and so uh, Paul cried out with a loud voice saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. How Paul orchestrated that or whoever, that all the prisoners remained instead of escaping, uh, is uh, another story that's not recorded here. But um, uh, we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in. And I'm sure he here is referring to the jailer. Uh, <clears throat> came in trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, here it is. Here's the question. Here's the question that you and I want to answer if somebody asks the question. And here it is. He brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Okay, that's a nice place when people ask that question. Normally they don't, but we can perhaps uh, bring them to that. For instance, ask them if you were to die tonight, would you go to heaven? And if they're interested, they can say, well, how can I be sure that I'm going to heaven or have eternal life or uh, I'm saved? 
And so here, I don't know whether his question was, how can I be saved from um, losing the prisoners or how can I be saved in a spiritual sense? But nevertheless, the Apostle Paul took it in a spiritual sense. And here is his magnificent, powerful, simple, absolutely clear response. And they, with Paul and Silas, they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. So, here again, you remember the, we, we did uh, John 3.16, and, uh, uh, and uh, Jesus said uh, uh, there, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him, believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, will not perish, but have everlasting life. The, the fulcrum, the, the, uh, the essence, the, it rides upon this one issue. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Whoever believes in him, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart uh, that God hath raised him from the dead. And in Ephesians, we say, by grace are ye saved through faith or believe through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God. So the magnificent simplicity. My dear friend, don't people put people through hoops and hurdles? Uh, the, 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 what about being good and being perfect? Dear saints, I, 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 I've been on this road for 60 years plus 60 plus years and uh, I still have not reached the level of perfection or they say sanctification well in terms of dedication yes I qualify but here you've got a you've got a novice you've got somebody just entering in like a babe just born into this world and you want to say just breathe just breathe do something simple not wash the car or uh, deal with the uh, physics or astronomy. No, no, no. Breathe. And here you're, you're, you're having a novice come in, possibly heard Paul preaching or something of that nature, so he had some rudimentary knowledge. The, but the probability is he did not know the Old Testament. Uh, he did not know the stories of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Joseph, and Moses, and Joshua and so on. He did not have that background. He did not have Isaiah 53, who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed. He didn't have that background. He didn't understand all about the atonement and the feast. He didn't have it. All the Apostle Paul says, just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. And so someone said, don't clean the fish until you get them in the boat. Get them in the boat first. Get the, uh, the people that are interested into a, a, a position of believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Once we do that, uh, we can uh, do what we call mentoring or discipling. And uh, I attended a conference uh, recently on uh, how to make disciples, and it was good stuff, good stuff. But I was, I was um, uh, there, uh, I asked the question, I raised my hand, <laughs> I said, may I ask a question? Yeah, sure, um, Brother Olson. And so I said, don't you, you don't make disciples of unbelievers. You need the evangelist to go and make believers uh, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, whoever believes in him. You start with the fundamental, you've got to have believers. And once you have believers, then the whole mentoring disciple process comes into effect. But you don't disciple them first and then try to make a 
believe we're out of them. It's putting the cart before the horse. It's out of order. And so here he gave them the simple instruction, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And here it is, right in my Bible with the leather cover. And uh, so on. And, uh, and then in verse 32, they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. And so, yes, when he told them to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved, obviously they went back into his house and had a discussion and Paul probably explained to him what it means to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and, and, and uh, so on. And I, at some point I, I assumed that either Paul or Silas asked, well, now, do you or do you not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? Okay, he gave them the road path road. In order to be saved, you've got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It does not say immediately, uh, he said, yes, I believe. No, it took place after there was a discussion, uh, probably a teaching in the home. And um, then when they were done, um, uh, then, then he took them. The, the same hour in the night, the same hour in the night, it's, it sounds like all this teaching about what it means to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ did not take a long time. In the same hour in the night, uh, he, uh, he washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all his straight way. Dear saints, the magnificent power of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ opens up a whole panorama, a whole different life of, of uh, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, trusting in his uh, vicarious atoning death. He died in your place. He paid the punishment for all your sins. And that means he died in your place, vicarious and so on. Atoning, payment for all sins by his death. The vicarious atoning death of the Lord Jesus Christ is what we believe in. And we believe that Jesus paid it all. The old song, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. And then the other one, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. Oh yes, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was at the cross, at that vicarious atoning death. And so, dear saint, if somebody should ask you, what, must, what can I do to be saved? Or if you ask them the question, if you were to die, do you know you would go to heaven? And they answer, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure, or no, or I hope so. You know, you can tell them based on Acts chapter 16 and uh, verse um, 31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. Thank you again for listening. This is Pastor Roy. God bless you. And uh, I'll be back with the final of this series.